my friend Therese. Hello. <laughs> Therese is an awesome artist here at Open Ground Studios. She's working on secret projects today that we're not allowed to show them, right? Hey. <laughs> what do we have here, Therese? So, so Paul, we have, um, this is a mask made by my um, husband. He's not alive anymore. His name is William Bernard. And the reason why I'm showing it to you is because you're doing some amazing pieces um, for a show coming up yes. that are masks. It's related to the mask in the human form. I know that masks were kind of important to him like in a lot of different ways. Yeah. What do you think it was about masks that he was yeah. so interested in? So uh, Bill was, um, he was a writer, a professional writer, and he was a recluse, a real reclusatory person. And mm -hmm. uh, But he also, you know, not just dabbled, but had a huge interest in masks because he felt that the mask kind of um, represented your psyche that you can't talk about sometimes in cultures. Yes. And a lot of ancients up until now still develop masks because of ceremonial, uh, Michael Harner was, he was a, a big fan of Michael Harner's to do the drum, to go into a shamanic vision, mm -hmm. come out and uh, maybe create a mask or a drawing or a weaving. Okay. So he was really, really inspired by that part of the human, um, human aspect, mm -hmm. the human psyche, what lies behind it by a mask thinking. Right. That was him. I mean, he loved that. And so... Which is cool because I think a lot of people think of masks as something you hide behind, but really it can actually show more of who you are or what's exactly. going on inside of you. Exactly. Yeah, he was really involved in the um, the human spirit and the power the human spirit really has on um, in a beneficial way, mm -hmm. in a very beneficial way, the power of the human spirit. And so mask making is one of those traditions. Mm -hmm. And so it was a self-discovery. Yes. He loved I mask making that. because of self-discovery, I think. So now cool. that we're talking, yeah. I think it has to do with self-discovery. Absolutely. And, and as a writer, I think that makes sense too. So tell me about this particular yes. mask. What inspired it and how did he make yeah. it and all of that. So he basically, um, this was pre-internet. I think this was made between... There was a world before the internet? <laughs> yes. <laughs> You learned so many things from your friends. <laughs> <laughs> what did people do? <laughs> what happened? Um, I just got her to join Instagram, by the way. That's Side right. Note, what's your Instagram name so they can all go follow you? <laughs> it's Garcia.Therese. I will put the link down below. Go follow her and then you can see her amazing artwork. Right. Okay, continue now. Sorry. Yeah, so, um, well, you know, the internet was around because this was made, um, but it wasn't its hype. And right. so people were still, you know, developing ways to interconnect social media. But this was made, I think, between 1994 and 1996, okay. more or less. Uh -huh. And he was also an instructor for disabled adults. So a lot of times he would do a mask making um, classes with them. Okay. So, um, as I said, he was always interested, but being an instructor for disabled adults kind of enabled him to actually start making them. He yeah. would just basically go to libraries or go to, you know, magazines. He would just, um, and, and he was a researcher too, being an English right. lit major before, a writer. He was really good at researching. So however research without using the internet, he would just research and then he found certain masks Kind of like what you do with Photoshop. You'll just yes. go through. He uh -huh. would pretty much do that. Play and it out a little. He played it out. He'd like re do the research and then he'd find masks that resonated with him. And he told me that the reason why he chose this was one of the masks he chose is because he liked the idea of Boca de la Verita in Latin means the mouth of truth. And he liked the idea of when you put your hand in, according to legend in ancient Romans, believed that if you put your hand in and if you were truthful, you could take your hand out. Mm -hmm. But if you weren't truthful, you were in trouble. You were, uh, you were in double trouble. It was both of both the right? according to legend. <laughs> so he liked that the that. fact that there is a checks and balances in life greater than yourself. Mm -hmm. He liked that about mythologies. There was always some god or goddess that right. was greater than yourself, and that's kind of who he was too. This mask he wanted to make, so he did it, and it's multimedia. It's got like a, I think poster, different types of paper and poster paper, and he used different gels that have like a golden makes a gel that is a. Uh, has pumice in it. So he used mediums like that and then just, just different types of um, more arts and crafts paints to make it. And then he'd um, actually use a copy machine and he'd blow it up whatever size he wanted to. And then I remember this part, he'd blow it up and then he'd kind of piece his mask together and then he would take, then he would go in with the actual materials he was going to use and cut everything out. But he would prepare for about a couple weeks to make the mask. You said he's made a bunch of them, right? You have he, several masks. He so. did. Maybe like 12 masks. Wow. Um, and he collected maybe some masks too, He right? did. He collected when he was in Mexico and Central America. They have some amazing He did. He's masks. Me Mexi yeah, he, he, there, he's got wooden masks in our apartment that he would have. Oh. He also collected masks like when we go to Chinatown in Oakland, he used to like to go there. He would collect masks that are ancient Chinese um, theater masks. 
and also different types of Japanese, ancient Japanese masks, Indonesian masks. He also collected totem, totem poles mm -hmm. and he actually, he never got to, but he really always wanted to create a 3D totem. Oh my gosh, yeah. yes. But like his, cool. yeah. And the one thing about Bill is that he did create masks that um, resonated with him and he would put himself into the mask. So these are not masks that are necessarily, he, he didn't necessarily want them to be historical, but they have mm -hmm. historical yeah. They were like more um, kind of an artist going in and putting their own into it and then creating something. The, the inspiration was like a starting point, but then he yes. did his own, his yeah. own thing. Let's do a little test right now. I'm going to stick my finger in the mouth and I'll say something okay. and if it bites me, we'll know I'm lying. I think Therese is awesome. <laughs> See? True! <laughs> you do one. Um, I think Paul is incredible and super duper. Oh, uh, woo! We passed the book at the <laughs> Two honest people right here. <laughs> now, <Thanks, Bill. laughs> yes, we could get some politicians in here, and it might be a different story. <laughs> That's right. I'm really honored that I'm able to share this right now because yeah. I think it's important. Masks are they're 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 still important today. So I'm thinking a lot about masks right now. Talk, like yeah. you said. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, that with you're us. welcome. Where can people uh, go see more people, of Therese? Yes, you can see my work at TheresaGarcia.com. <laughs> go there. <laughs> Thank yes. you guys for hanging out with us. Go down and give this video a like and subscribe to my channel so you can come back and meet more of my awesome artist friends. Until next time, bye! bye. bye.